I'm Dale Kislik. This video is all about uh, taking a close look at the Shackleton tent that's made by Ellis Canvas Tents. I hope you stay tuned. So here we are, it's a bit of a windy day. Uh, we're right during the coronavirus pandemic. And so two things that makes me think of. Number one is that's why we're in the backyard doing this. Normally I'd be out in the forest doing a review and a tent setup like this. But it's coronavirus time, so we're in the backyard. Number two, it's windy because they're forecasting a storm uh, for the next day and a half or so. And so it's a great time to put our new Shackleton tent uh, to the test through a rainstorm right here in the backyard. The Shackleton tent is uh, as the name suggests, uh, a tent that was used by Shackleton on his journey to Antarctica in the Endurance. If you're familiar with that story or if you've seen any of the film or uh, photographs from that epic voyage of survival, you will see that there are actually photos of the Shackleton tent that they used in that journey to Antarctica set up on the ice. Pretty spectacular history. Um, the one that we have here has been brought up to speed into a modern day uh, uh, version by Dave Ellis at Ellis Canvas Tents. If you take a look at the Shackleton tent on the old photographs, you'll notice right away that they, the entrance and exit door, you have to get on your knees and crawl out the sidewall in that tent. But uh, as you'll see later once this is up, Dave Ellis has made uh, new upgrades to it and it has a door that is elevated and you can just walk right into the tent which in my point of view is awesome and a very good innovation. I'd like to take this time to thank Don Cavellis from Four Dog Stoves. I was at a winter camping symposium a few months ago and I talked to Don about what he thought was an extraordinary trekking tent, canvas tent, what he thought a really great design would be and he pointed me in the direction of the Shackleton tent Don Cavellis introduced us to the concept of the Shackleton tent and Dave Ellis and I got on the phone and started talking about the tent and the merits of it and I decided to pull the trigger and order one and I've set it up a few times here and I'm really excited about this tent, really excited about this tent. We'll show you a few reasons why. Uh, what we have here is this is the tent in this package here. This here is the poles. Here we have the tent stakes. And this is the removable floor that I chose to have as an option. And I guess Dave was just being real nice because he also sent me this really nice uh, duffel bag as a gift, I guess. The reason that Colleen and I have, have uh, decided to buy a Shackleton tent is as follows. Um, we picked a floor print of 8x8, eight, eight, 8 feet by 8 feet. That's the smallest Shackleton tent that Ellis Tent makes. They also have an 11 by 11 and a 14 by 14, which would be a big tent. We picked the 8 by 8 because we wanted to get a feel for the tent. And uh, if for our trips down the road we decide to expand and, and take groups using this tent, then we would probably get a little bit bigger tent and go from there. But we chose 8 by 8 because we think that this tent um, isn't just for winter use. Up here we use canvas tents with hot s with uh, stoves and we, we go winter trekking and we get as light a tent as possible, as light a stove as possible. We put them on toboggans and we trek out into the snow and we winter camp. And that's the primary reason that we use the canvas tents. But this one being eight by eight, really quick to set up and uh, like great in the wind. Um, you'll see all the reasons why once it's set up, but we think Colleen and I think that there is a place for this in our canoe trips too in the summer that we can use this as a summer tent as well just for the uh, incredible comfort of it and we also canoe in the early spring and the late fall with dry suits uh, and inclement tough weather where we still go out in that and so this with a stove would be something we'd consider packing in a canoe. It's too big to put in a backpack and walk in with it's not that type of tent, but certainly car camping, certainly canoeing, and certainly winter trekking. 
the tent alone, this is just the canvas in here, in its bag, this is 26 pounds. A little heavier than I wanted when I first started talking to Dave. I, I would have liked to get it down closer to 20 or even under 20 pounds. However, um, when I look at the reinforcements and the, the way he's built it, I think the weight is worth it, even for snow tracking on toboggans. I think it's, I think it's great. I, I think it's, uh, I, I don't mind the extra weight because I see how he's built the tent. This is uh, the poles. It's an option. You don't have to have the poles, but I got the poles. This is five pounds. The stakes, military grade stakes. These stakes are the bomb. Dot com. These uh, these are pretty smoking stakes. So this package right here is five pounds. And then the floor. This is a removable floor. It's actually sitting in a bag, and I'll unbox box it in a second. Uh, this is six pounds. So. In a winter trek here in our area where we're in the forest for the most part, you could do without the floor. You could do without the stakes and just guy out to trees and, and uh, sticks and saplings and roots and that sort of thing. You could cut poles in our area. It's fine to cut poles. So you could eliminate 5, 10, 16 pounds right there and just go with 26 pounds and just take the tent on its own. So I love what uh, Dave has done here with this, uh, this bag that carries the tent, and you'll see why. First, I'm just going to unpack it quickly, and then put it back together. Um, right off the bang, the reason that I love this, uh, I'm sure everyone watching has had an issue where you purchase a tent, no matter what kind of tent, and it comes in a bag, and then you go to put it back in that bag and it is a workout just to get it back in. Well Dave has overcome that issue uh, and given you so much flexibility here with this style of bag uh, and let's just have a look and see what I mean. Okay so we take off that strap just like that and the wings fold out just like that. We've got one, two, three across here Loosen them right off. One, two, and three. Water resistant fabric here with a lot of uh, extra fabric so you can overlap. Okay, overlap as you wish. And then you open it up, and here's the tent on its own. So I'm going to just take the tent and lift it right up out of the way, and that's the footprint of this bag. Beautiful, awesome. Yeah, there's a little thread left over here. Okay, so you put your tent back in. Let's say it's one of those rainy, miserable days and your tent is wet and you just aren't gonna get it packed up as tightly as you'd like. Well, it's not an issue with this system. You just bundle it in there and then start folding over. One, two, that and I'm going to tighten it after the first step I want to take here is as you can see it's starting to close it and squeeze it okay so I have all of this room to squeeze and package it up tight so first I'll run the straps through one just kind of loose like that now I'm going to run this strap through number two just kind of loose like that. Number three. Just kind of loose like that. Now I'm going to get the overlap. So I'm going to pull the flap from this side tight. Cinch that right over top. And cinch it down. Same thing in the middle. Overlap two layers. And cinch it down like that. Same thing here. Overlap, cinch down. And cinch it even more. So I could have packed it more con compact this way, or I could leave it long like I've done here. You have options. You have options. That's what's so cool about this. Now we just simply tuck and fold on this side. Bring that end flap over. I'll just hit it with my knee. Same thing on this side. 
that can hold. Now we'll stick this through like so and zip. Bang. Done. Just like that. And we'll just put the extra tucks under there and here's our carrying handles. Bada boom. Awesome. Just like that. Let's get back to this. Here's the poles. Aluminum. Okay. And you'll see when I go to set it up. Just like that. Really simple. Nice aluminum poles. Comes with three poles. And you'll see why when we set it up. And you can choose to cut your own and eliminate the need to bring those along. We'll set it up today with the poles. Now let's look at the removable floor. This is kind of cool too. I like what Dave's done here as well. So this uh, just opens up almost like, <laughs> like a briefcase in some sense. So we undo that and it folds open. Okay, so there it is. I'll just flip that over to that side. And what we have inside here zipped in is the floor. Okay, so inside there, that is the floor. And this is a durable, durable fabric. And we'll show you how that goes in later on. Colleen's going to give us a hand. We're going to set this thing up here. And uh, just so I, I, I almost forgot, the other things I've added to the tent setup kit is a little hammer. And in the woods, of course, you can just use a baton, a stick. And also six carabiners, which will come into play when we put the floor into place later. And there are options to how you set up the floor. Your, your floor can be sewn in or removable, as I requested. So we'll stick those in the pocket. Can you start your start the time so we can see how long it takes us? I can. All right. And go. Go. Okay. So we're not going to run, but we're definitely going to take haste. There is a storm coming. I need six stakes out of there. So this is just a quick little redo to speed up the process of tent setup for you viewers so you don't have to watch nine minutes of uh, stuff going on. Uh, for our purposes, I'm going to fast track it and, and I'm just going backwards to just show you how quickly it pops up. All you have to do is pound in one, two, three, four of the stakes in an X pattern like this loosely and then put in the poles and stand it up as you'll see right now okay front pole guide out loosely back pole guide out loosely we have the front and the back pole guide out loosely and because it's attached here and on each side and at the back to the ground with those four stakes, it'll stay like that. It'll stay like that. Now I just walk into the center, put the pole up in the top and push up like this. Here we are inside the tent and just showing how easy the pole is to put up. So here's the peak of the tent. There's that nice little ring like that. And all we do is take the pole, stick it in that ring, and it's in. There's nothing to tie, there's nothing to, to cinch. It just fits in there perfectly. And push the pole up. All right, that was quick. Now I'd like to show you how easy it is to tighten the tent. 
with the uh, type of system that Dave has set up for guying the tent out. So it's this little little uh, device right here. It pinches the cable inside there and grabs it. So to release it, I just have to take the cable out and it'll slide. And to put it to grip, just stick the, the cord, sorry, not cable back in there. So it's this easy. And it's tight. Go do the other four sides. So now I'll go along and take the corners. There's four corners that you see here. One, two, and then just guy them out. And then the tent is up. Okay, so that took nine minutes and 15 seconds, and it's up yet. Further uh, setup would be to just tack down the corners. We're gonna put in the removable floor next. So the sod cloth is a water resistant fabric. It's uh, poly, some kind of poly coated fabric. I'm not even sure. I'd have to look on the website and see. This is seven ounce um, Sunforger Army uh, canvas duct. And it's uh, mildew resistant, water resistant and fire resistant. So seven ounce is what makes it nice and lightweight. I guess we'll have to slide the floor under the pole, eh? <laughs> Or this is what I got the carabiners for. He's really reinforced this with solid webbing as a stress point, so he's made sure. He also added a loop on the outside on the top, so you can actually eliminate the pole completely and you can hang it by running a guy line above the tent. And you could actually lift it with a, a tripod or a bipod or just a rope strung between trees on the outside and eliminate the pole altogether, which is kind of cool. Let's look inside here. We got one nice window there, which we're going to open right now because, boy, it's already kind of warmish. There we go. There's our door entrance. And then back here, we have another big window. Nice big one. Quick ventilation there. And then up here, let's have a look up here. I'll, I'll trade you sides, Colleen, if you want. Because what we've got up here, too, is a little spot to let out that warm air up top too so there's a little vent up there as well which is kind of cool and that just closes back up like that we'll leave it open for now what we love about this the way this tent is built is there's so much great headroom right there's so much really really there's a lot of great great headroom in here we're contemplating the floor in summer use Colleen was just saying that we can see using this floor in the summertime. It's nice, right? It'd be really nice. But in the wintertime, uh, we're coming in with snowy boots and stuff. And, and this mesh, mesh fabric might be fine with the snowy boots, right? But typically our winter camping, it seems to me to have no floor would be better and you just let everything fall because you're, you're bringing in branches and sticks and you're loading your stove and sometimes sparks come off the stove and you're, you're typically cooking on your stove as well. 
And so for all those reasons, we'd likely leave the removable floor at home in the winter. And uh, you can always bring a tarp with you or whatever, I guess, and if you really want something underneath you. But like for just under each sleeping platform or for under each sleeping mattress, you yeah, could put a tarp or whatever. Sense. Yeah. But we, in the winter, like one of the big strategies where we are in the appropriate places, we can put spruce boughs down all over the place and make that your flooring. And when you step in with snow covered boots, you, all the snow falls off and melts off and it just goes through the spruce boughs into the ground and that's nice. So, uh, Dave changed the original Shackleton, Shackleton tent design by lifting this wall back up here higher. And he does have an option. You can get a door installed in the back too where you, so you can enter and exit from front and back. We chose not to. But uh, he raised that up. The original Shackleton tent would have just gone straight across at that level with a short wall. So this is great. You get so much more headroom. So much more headroom. And then the same over here with our doorway. A lot of the, the snow trekking or winter trekking tents that you see, they will have a stove placement on one side down here. And then the stove jack will be on one of the short walls. And the stove pipe goes up and out. And Don Cadalis was saying to me that... Uh, he wasn't really keen on that idea because all that stovepipe is outside. And that stovepipe, in this case, right here by Colleen, this is where the stove sits. By having your stove sit right here and the pipe going up the center all the way up, in this case, it's almost six and a half feet of stovepipe that adds to the heat of the interior of your, of your shelter. So it's not just the stove that's giving off the heat, but instead all of that six feet of stove pipe is also contributing to the heat inside your shelter, which is efficient, right? When it's damped down, it's radiating heat and, and heating up your, your shelter. Because you've got a one across there, you could have your um, line in the wintertime across there to hang up your wet clothing and let it dry. Oh yeah, There's, he's got loops up there too, see those ones up I in the peak? I see those, I yeah. would never be able to reach those. But <laughs> so there's, he's got a lot of little, there's one there, there's four up there, yeah. and then there's one there and there. Lots of places to last and hang up clotheslines, <laughs> which is also nice to have, right? So boot liners, hang your mittens, things like that. But yeah, you can roll that up, of course, and you know, leave the doorway open. Very nice. Tie it on thing. Cool. So there's, there is a bit of an overhang here, so really you could tuck your boots inside here. And it seems to me on Dave's website, he, uh, he showed an annex where you could, you could hang one of his uh, canvas tarps over the front and have a, a front entrance. So, I mean, you could hang your own tarp over here and boy you could have a big vestibule out here. So a couple other points that sold us on the, the Shackleton tent that Don Cavellis and in talking to Dave Ellis, the tent maker, um, that make this a really great tent. Tent for one thing, it's got quite, it, there's no flat flattened roofs, they're all got a pretty decent slope on them of course, so uh, any snow build up on there is going to have a tendency to shed a lot easier, which is good. And I know in wall tents, they tend to sag and get pretty heavy and get pretty caught up on here and, and create quite a load. The other thing that's really beautiful about this is you don't need short wall pickets. And what a short wall picket is, a lot of tents will require you to put a stick between here and here to hold this up at the right level. But because the roof line comes straight from the peak, runs right down here and then just goes straight to the anchor, you don't need any of these pickets. You eliminate all of those sticks that a lot of bell tents and, and various other types of tents have to have. So uh, Don Cavellis was always saying, yeah, about two and a half feet is the perfect angle when you have a center pole pitch tent and you can eliminate all the work of setting up those pickets on the side. And, and uh, Dave from Ellis Tents has done that really well. And he's got this really reinforced in here. I can see that. So. Then the other thing with the Shackleton tent that's kind of cool, because it's got one, two, three, four sides, and then it's got four dropped sides, 
there's all it, it's almost teepee like it really behaves teepee like so when you get wind it's gonna dump the wind off the side rather than create a sail so yeah, we know that teepees are a great design for shedding wind because the wind hits it sweeps around it and just keeps going and it doesn't blow hard on the side of the tent and this does the same because it's got all these nice angles where the wind will come up and disappear and even the short walls to a degree also has slope on it so that the wind can kind of sweep around and escape rather than push hard against the wall. So we've got the stove pipe in the center for, so we've got all that pipe inside contributing to the heat of the of the shelter. We've got easy to set up. We set this thing up in nine minutes. That's amazing. That is amazing. Uh, you have a limit because of the roof line and the anchor points we've eliminated any short wall pickets that are necessary. Um, you, can, you don't have to squat down or bend down to get inside. You can just kind of do a little duck and you're inside the tent. Uh, it dumps the wind really effectively. And there's lots of headroom in there because of the two raised ends. Lots of headroom. That's cool. That's a good logo. So we've got a four inch uh, stove jack up there. So the hole is actually cut a little bigger than a four inch pipe, but uh, that allows a little bit of fresh air to come back in. And what I have here is a uh, Trekker, the Nico Trekker stove, which has a four inch, uh, four inch uh, stove pipe hole on the top right there. So we're gonna just go ahead and set this guy up too. A lot of these stoves recommend that you put sand in them so you don't burn out the bottoms. In the winter time, all our sand here in Alberta is frozen. So I take uh, sheet metal and I've cut a piece of sheet metal and I've shoved it in there as a false floor. And better to burn out a false floor a few times than to burn out your stove. So one of the things that I did notice, because the peak is quite high on here, uh, on the Ellis tent website it does recommend that you order a couple extra stove lengths just because it's so uh, such a long ways up there so um, I work at a sheet metal shop uh, part-time or part of the year so I was able to make my own pieces that's the other thing I wanted to mention too one of the pros of having a center mounted stove and stove pipe is the stability of it you don't have to come up with a whole bunch of funky arrangements outside to support your stovepipe because it's supported by the stove jack at the top of the center of the tent. So that's another thing. You don't need a pair of scissor poles or anything like that to wire your stove jack from moving or your stovepipe from moving all over the place. So another little benefit. I got stove set up. And because we're in our backyard and we've got nice new grass here, I put a piece of sheet metal down because, well, I don't feel like wrecking the, glass, the grass. And then uh, the stove is burning right now. I'm just, uh, I just added an elbow here and an elbow there. So, uh, to the piping system that uh, I have here. And I just did that today because I, I thought about the way I wanted to position the stove in regards to when Colleen and I are in here, just two or more. Uh, I thought, you know, if I did an offset like that, then I can position wood pile nicely over there, behind that way. The stove facing towards where I'm going to be sleeping, which is here. That's where Colleen sleeps. And then I have quick access to the stove and I can reach everything and load the stove in the middle of the night. No problem at all with that, the aid of that little offset. And it, actually, what I'll do is I'll get up here, and I'm going to show you. So, our little funky cots here can be slid down like so. And I've got the windows open and the stove going, which may seem silly, but the reason is because we're, um, we're just burning it in with those new elbows, right? There we go. So we move those guys out of the way. And as I sneak back over here, there is room for another cot here, if we were to go with cots for three people. 
um, and gear and stuff. If this is the winter, of course, we'd have a lot of gear. And if we didn't use these cots, if we were on Thermarest mattresses, um, you can suddenly add more people, right? So the cots take up a bit of space. They're a little wider than your average body. So if we were just on Thermarest, we could snuggle in there and get tighter yet and probably put two people over here. So, you know, in, in a snuggy, snug as a bug in a rug type situation, we could probably put four people in here even with the stove. It'd be snug. And our gear may have to uh, be piled up or even stored outside or something, but uh, uh, three people for sure. And, and that's winter camping, right? So with the stove, the stove takes up space no matter how you look at it, no matter what it is or what hot tent it is. And I just added a little bit of uh, baling wire too, just as an extra support because I put an offset in there. It makes it a bit of a, a weakness as far as some flexibility there. If it was, if the stove was here and the pipe went straight up and straight out that smoke hole, it's pretty solid. But because I've now added an offset, I just wanted to make sure that there isn't a lot of wiggling and, and jarring, so I just wrapped some, some baler wire around there for now. Okay, so here we are the next day. We spent the night in the backyard here. And it's been raining all night. Um, and it's still raining now. And the nice thing is that I can test out how the Sun Forger Marine Boat Shrunk fabric works as a single skin against the rain. And I'm happy. So, this here has been rained on all night, and I can rub my hands along it just like this and not get wet, which is kind of cool. So, over there too, it doesn't matter where you touch, it seems to be fine. So, that's good. So, it's, it's water resistant, at least brand new like this. I don't know what it'll be like five years from now. So here we are on the next day, I'm going to take the tent down and I came up with a way to facilitate uh, drying the tent out, which is important with canvas tents of course, and I've just basically raised it up above there and now you can see it's floating on the guy lines and the poles, <laughs> and none of the fabric is actually touching, and it was simple. All I did was take, here we'll look at this one right here, this is the floor. Uh, tethers right there, and I just used a carabiner and I hooked it up there and that raised the sod cloth up off the ground And I've got lots of airflow underneath the tent and the windows open And I'll let this sit out here in the Sun with a little bit of a breeze and dry it out and then pack it up All right, that brings us to the end of our video on the Shackleton tent Please check out our Instagram uh, page at nature alive and also our website, naturealiveadventures.com. Uh, by following us on Instagram, you'll get future posts on this tent uh, when we're out on all of our adventures and that sort of thing. So you'll get any other feedback that we happen to have in the months that come as we use this tent and go on some of our adventures. Uh, thanks so much. Please subscribe to our channel for more exciting and interesting videos. And uh, I always enjoy those comments at the bottom too, so please, uh, please write in and tell us how you feel and I get back to every single person. I always do. It takes a while, but I always do. Thanks so much and take care. Happy adventuring.